Weather can be unpredictable, and extreme weather can have an impact on the safety and well-being of your home, farm, ranch, or business. Especially if you have a livestock operation and power goes out. We've seen a lot of storms like this, spring and early summer. Tonight, our friends from Cummins Power Generation are going to show us a way to have a little more peace of mind, especially in times when we do have a power outage. Good evening and welcome to this edition of Rural America Live. Our friends from Cummins Power Generation, I'm Mark Oppold. Joining me in studio, Justin Davis. He is sales manager for Cummins Southern Plains. And uh, next, returning as well, Dwayne Fisk. Dwayne is regional sales manager, and they're here to tell us about generators, specifically how automatic standby generator systems can make a difference for you and your operation, no matter what it is, or maybe for your home as well. So let me first uh, say welcome to our new uh, Roy Rogers studio. What do you think you're yeah, tonight? Glad to be back. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> you guys, this is a, they gave us a grand tour. And it's uh, quite comforting compared Good, to the yeah. last one. Well, so. We're glad to glad have to you here. here. Yeah, yeah, we're proud of it too and, and glad that uh, you guys are here again this year. Uh, we're going to jump right into the subject matter at hand, but first let's get a little bit of background here. Uh, you been with Cummins how long? Uh, a little over 10 years now. 10 years. So, uh, Texas born and raised, uh, covered Texas and Oklahoma uh, as far as launching this new product and, mm -hmm. and just uh, spreading the word about power generation Very and good. the Cummins product. You've had enough, you've had your kind of weather, severe weather down there too. I'll tell you what, it comes at unexpected times too, so it's uh, it's it's a good business to be in. And we're going to go from Texas to the North Country and Duane, welcome back again. I know you're a native of Minnesota. Well, actually, I'm a native of Wisconsin, but I'm living in Minnesota. Oh, well, yeah, now, when so, you're in that part of the country, you got to make that yeah, differential. Yeah, Packers and Vikings got this <laughs> yeah. thing going up there. So, uh, yeah, you've been, uh, gosh, the years continue like me in broadcasting. They just start to pile up a little bit. I've got a few years in this industry. Yeah, I've been with uh, with Cummins or Onan for for a little over 40 years now. So it's uh, it's exciting uh, time for me. Uh, we're introducing new products and looking at new markets to get into. So mm -hmm. it's it's been a lot of fun. Very of good. Fun. And before we get into the further uh, Justin, let's talk about I mean, for the folks to stand by because the uh, folks here at Cummins uh, have a contest for you to enter and win a new standby generator of your own. Tell us how that's going to work. Uh, the details are to follow at the end, so you got to watch the whole show, but we're going to give a generator away yeah. at the end of the show. Very good. Well, we're going to tell you how to do that. How to do it, how to do yeah. it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll so get that far tuned. ahead, right? Right, exactly. All right, Dwayne, let's get started. Just jump right in and talk about what is a standby generator and how does it work? Uh, we talk about a system, Mark, and the generator is part of it. It's a uh, engine-driven uh, uh, generator, mm -hmm. and then we couple that to a transfer switch. And that system actually is monitoring the power coming in off the grid. Our transfer switch and the control in the generator is looking for power. And once that power drops off, then the system takes over. It automatically starts the generator. It gives the time uh, eight or 10 seconds to warm up and then it switches the load. So you've got power within eight to 10 seconds of losing grid power. And uh, then of course it's all automatic. It exercises itself. It comes on if you're not home and the storm hits, power goes out, uh, the system takes over and yeah. it's completely automatic. It's seamless. You see, uh, uh, hear a little bit of noise and, and you're back into power. Yeah, that's something. We'll touch on that throughout the hour, but it right. is automatic. That's the peace of mind we talked about at the top of the show. Right. You don't need to be home. Obviously, you just have the peace of mind to know that if power goes out while you're gone, uh, that generator is going to kick in and uh, take care of whatever your livestock, your home, whatever it might be. Right. Uh, and our uh, Justin, our, our, our audience, I'm sure, is familiar with portable mm -hmm. generators. They've been on for a long time. What about the benefits of it? We're tonight really focusing on Cummins standby generators. Yeah, portables, you can buy at all the big box stores. They're a, a cheap way to get power. Um, our products are stationary mounted. They're, they're all automatic. Um, so portables, you have to refresh the fuel you've got to uh, you've got to worry about dragging that that out make sure it runs I know every portable I've ever had I've always had trouble cranking it mm -hmm. uh, when I needed it uh, and then also the PTO units that a lot of the AG guys are used to doing oh, yeah. um, is is they've got to go hook up the tractor go find the drag the PTO out um, and it's always during storm situations so it's never it's, it's a safety issue as well too where our stuff it, it knows when it uh, when the storms come through it's going to kick on mm -hmm. and we're so tied to electricity now more than ever even the modern day uh, AG operations, electricity is more essential now than it ever has yeah, been. Yeah, we're going to get into that later for, we, you think about confined livestock, you know, hog operation, dairy operation, cattle, whatever it might be, but homes are so dependable 
computers, a lot of things are run, you know, maybe whole businesses uh, are run by computers, and those things, if they shut down for a lean period of time, you lose all your data of your customer base, uh, you know, that, that's that's a loss for a business. Absolutely, and you can't ever plan for a power outage. We're it's right. not like the company's going to tell you, hey, your power's fixing to go out for seven hours, like it did in, in my neighborhood uh, last Sunday. So, I mean, it could be a squirrel runs into the transformer, so it's never, you're, you're never prepared for mm -hmm. that. What about, uh, tell us about the use of standby generators, Dwayne, back and kind of focus more on uh, agriculture and industry like this. What, what would you suggest? We offer a broad range of products. Uh, I, I like to tell people, you tell us how much power you need, what kind of fuel you want to run it on, and we've got a product for you. Our, our uh, products start off at, uh, for the agriculture industry, uh, we really look, we start off around 10 kilowatt for the smaller ones, and we can go up to 500 kilowatt. We, obviously, we make larger ones, but that's kind of the range that, that satisfies the needs in the agricultural market. Mm -hmm. um, Cummins uh, power generation starts off at about 2,500 watts and goes up to 3.5 megawatts. So we build a, a very broad range of products and then again, the transfer switches that make the seamless connection of the unit into the uh, uh, power system is uh, another part of the product that we make. So mm -hmm. we've got uh, products, uh, different fuels, natural gas or LP, propane, uh, and diesel. And uh, on the diesel sets, we offer different size fuel tanks. So if you're real close to the diesel fuel supplier and you can get fuel in a hurry, if the storm goes out, you might want a, a tank that's going to give you 24 hours of runtime, but we make tanks that will give you up to 96 hours of runtime. Yeah. So uh, it depends on how easy it is to get fuel to your site. If you're very remote, you're going to want a larger tank. If you're close into your fuel supplier, you probably don't need anything quite as big. But uh, th those are the, the things that we bring into the ag market is, is kind of a 10 kilowatt up to a 500 kilowatt. And, and before we get, and we'll come back to this, but just maybe just brush through it right here now. Uh, what would be a good example of somebody who just needed a 10 kilowatt system? What would they maybe use that for? 10 kilowatt uh, uh, in most cases is going to run a water pump or some, some type of a, a, a single device. Uh -huh. When you get into confinement egg, you're looking at feed systems, you're looking at water systems, you're looking at ventilation systems uh, along with the water. And so you're going to want to get into something that's probably up in the 75, 60, 75 kilowatt and going on up mm -hmm. for something that's in a confinement setting for, for hogs okay. or for poultry, something like that. Yeah. And then the big one, the 500, I mean, that would be obviously for a whole farm, including the house, I would imagine. Is that that, that takes care of pretty much what's on the site. And again, uh, it's it's easy to talk about it, but the most important thing is to get somebody to come out and do a site survey when you get into this Absolutely. thing because we talk in broad terms. We go yeah. from here to here, but everybody's situation is a little bit Absolutely. different. So we, yeah. uh, our dealers are trained to come out and take a look at what the site is. You talk to them and tell them what you want to power, and they can come back and give you a quote for, for what type of a system right. you need. And that kind of works in back just into the uh, the contest. You're going to give away a free generator, mm -hmm. but they're going to have to I mean, what they what they want to do, and they will want to do it anyway, is to get a uh, come out, have someone come out and, and just and get a uh, estimate, take a look at their operation. That's what it's all about, really. You can't really help them, as Dwayne says, until you know what their situation uh, absolutely. is. Absolutely, and we've got some fantastic partners around around this country that really know what they're talking about. So don't do it yourself. I yeah. mean, this is this is going to be a construction site that's going to take some uh, take some planning that a normal homeowner is not going to yeah. want to do. And later so. on, in fact, we have an example of uh, one of your customers who just. Uh, south of uh, Nashville. We're going to mm -hmm. look at a little bit later. What about, uh, before we leave that, Dwayne, uh, sound. If somebody, if, if, if sound and noise is an issue, uh, maybe there, we're talking something around the house, uh, you have a solution for that as well. We, we build sets that are uh, uh, capable of, of uh, running, operating full load and, and being less than 70 dB on a sound level. Uh, if sound is an issue and you need to have a weather enclosure that protects it from the weather, uh, we've got an enclosed set. If it's not an issue, if you've got an open range somewhere and you're not really concerned about the sound level, mm -hmm. then we build open, uh, open sets. So it's easy for us to take a look at what your needs are. And again, it's, it's the flexibility of our, our design that we can provide for you exactly what you need. Sure. And by the way, uh, listeners and viewers, we're going to be opening our telephone lines, as always, later in our program. It's Rural America Live, and you're a very important part of that. So be taking notes, and when we come to that time, Dwayne and uh, Justin would love to talk to you and answer questions about your operation and what might be uh, working for you. And let's go talk a little bit more, uh, a better idea. We've had a better idea now of standby generators. Uh, talk a little bit more about Cummins, the company, if you would. 
I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to, to wear this brand right here. You know, the brand is, uh, is is hugely important. The history of Cummins, you know, I was raised knowing Cummins as the Dodge truck engine. Um, yeah. but, but I've always known um, it for quality and integrity. So when I got a chance to come to work for this company, um, it's, it's very, very proud to, to wear this. Yeah, but we have a long legacy. Not a lot of people know that, that, that we make products outside of the Dodge truck. So, But we make uh, small generators that go on horse trailers. We make the large ones. And now we're, we're introducing this residential light commercial line that goes on mm -hmm. um, houses and, and also the ag market as well. And I was noticing in some of the literature that before the program here, you've got customer support for over 5,000 different uh, uh, locations worldwide. 5,500 locations worldwide. So we're a global company. Um, we, we run deep in the industrial world, and we're bringing that knowledge and that, and that engineering power into an affordable product for mm -hmm. the everyday use. And, Dwayne, the people that uh, drive RVs, uh, they would see that Cummins name on those generators that would run an RV as well. We've got, uh, we've got the Cummins name both on a generator and, in most cases, on a diesel-powered uh, motorhome. It's the uh, Cummins engine that's in the back of a co coach or sometimes they're in the front, but it would be a Cummins, Cummins engine that would be pushing the coach down the road, too. So we're very familiar. We're in the uh, recreation vehicle market. And in our facility in Minnesota, we build generators for... Uh, not only the egg and the, and the uh, uh, business and residential, but also for commercial mobile, for RVs. Uh, you'll find fire trucks that have got our, our generators in them. You'll find ambulances that have got fire, uh, the, the Cummins owning product in them. Yeah. Uh, we build marine generators for both commercial and recreational vessels. So uh, I like to tell people, and I have for many years, since I got a lot of years in the industry, <laughs> we build an, a, a generator for whatever you've got. You tell us what power you need, how much you want to fuel, what kind of fuel you want to run it on, and uh, we, we build something that's going to fit the, the There's product. a great shot there, a good example here. and uh, That that would have Cummins, uh, some, some very big, big Cummins en engines in those, uh, a number of Cummins big engines. I think that particular vessel had six of them in there. Is that right? Around. Yeah. Uh, backup generators for, for hospitals, uh, businesses, small, small and large businesses. Small to large. I mean, we, we go up to the three and a half megawatt, like I said before, which would be a big, a big. That's a ninety-five liter mm -hmm. engine that's pushing that thing. So uh, start from the small and we go to the big. Well, and you notice all the all the applications that we just talked about. Marine, you know, you lose power hundred miles offshore, you're down. You know, in a hospital, if you're on a hospital bed. Uh, you lose power, you know, you could lose lives. So wow. we go into to critical situations because we build quality products. Right. And also, and that there's that uh, Cummins engine that people are well aware of for many, many years. Uh, but also interesting, I found it interesting, uh, you call them national treasures, and indeed they are. Statue of Liberty, uh, Mount Rushmore, uh, Duane, you've got the 40-plus years. Tell <laughs> us about the application. What, do you, what is that all about? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a fun thing to be able to say that uh, when, the, when the power goes out, and the Statue of Liberty still is lit up. It's lit up because there's a Cummins generator that's supplying power. Uh, same with uh, Mount Rushmore. Uh, when the power goes out and the lights go off on the hill, when the lights come on, they're being powered by a Cummins generator. Isn't that so those, and, and there are a lot of places. I mean, a lot of the uh, 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 different sites that tourists go to see, they don't see the generator. They might see a box. It might be off in a corner somewhere. Sure. A couple of trees are on it. But in a lot of cases, that's a Cummins power system that's providing lights when the power goes down. And I know both of you are proud to say it's all made. You mentioned Minnesota already, but USA made and sold and distributed, of course, worldwide, but uh, made in the USA. And made in America. I mean, how much better can you get? I guess that's right. <laughs> what, uh, Justin, talk about some of the uh, applications. Again, we kind of touched on that more. Uh, getting heavier back into our folks in rural America and, and ag businesses, if you would. Ag business, I mean, we like down in Texas a couple weeks ago, we, we did one in a big horse ranch um, that had a breeding, breeding operation where they'd actually collect semen um, and they would have to keep it at certain, certain temperatures. Uh, if you lose that, that freezer capability, uh -huh. then you, you lose quite a bit of product. Yeah. Um, so same thing with uh, hog confinements as well. Same thing with chicken confinements. Um, even row crop guys, greenhouse guys. So our, our products can span uh, the agricultural market uh, globally. Yeah, it goes, you talk about hogs, uh, chickens that we've seen there. And uh, uh, I grew up in Iowa, and there's a lot of hog operations uh, there that depend on that backup power. First time you don't have that, it doesn't work. You certainly know what the investment is well worth it. And then you have the peace of mind to know automatic, no matter where you are. And even, and we'll get into this a bit later too, there are now a technology you can be, I guess you can, you can uh, make changes 
remotely as well to what your generator is doing. Is that right? It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Our engineering, our, our guys back at the factory are some of the smartest, most intelligent engineers that we have. Um, but yeah, we can remotely monitor it. Uh, it's a, a PC 500 and 550. So you can actually get text messages, you can get emails. It's an accessory, um, but you can control that, that whole generator offsite. Mm -hmm. And if they want to get more and uh, learn more about their, your newer line of products, we'll get to this later as well. But there's always people looking for something new, and you do you have it at Cummins. We do. You know, we're, we come, we bring our industrial know-how into this new new product line. Um, so it's a uh, it's a clean sheet design. So it's a Cummins engines. Uh, there was 44 beta units that we tested in over 14,000 hours. Wow. Uh, so it's super impressive design. A lot of lot of guys back at the factory spent a lot of time and effort into it. Put was put on shaker tables, 180 degree, uh, 180 mile an hour wind test. Uh, it's amazing what these products go go through before they ever hit hit the market. Tell us more about that, Dwayne, because that research and development that doesn't you don't just introduce a product in a week or a month or something like that here. One of the more fun things is to see these things put through their uh, rigors when they're when they're put through the test, and, and we don't have a video here, but we uh, uh, to show, but we do have a situation where we actually put these units, a running unit, on a table that we call it a shaker table, and it's literally hydraulically driven table, and mm -hmm. it it represents the shaking forces that you would see in an earthquake, and so there are industry standards on how much you shake it, the frequency and the direction and so on and so forth. So we actually put a running generator on this shaker table. It's a big table, but it shakes the living daylights out of this thing. And, uh, and, and so those are some of the things we do. When you get into cold temperature testing, we've also got uh, people think that it's always wintertime in Minnesota, but we've actually got a uh, <laughs> test cell in a facility where we can control the humidity and the temperature and actually take these units down into some pretty severe temperatures to make sure that they start in the cold. Uh, obviously, we do the, the normal uh, fuel consumption tests and sound level. We've got the largest sound cell in the world on our uh, campus in Minnesota there. Uh, it's it's uh, it might be overshadowed by a larger one elsewhere in the world, but for right now we've got bragging rights mm -hmm. and we actually have the largest sound cell. So all these different um, uh, facets of design we're able to do in our facility. There's a picture there for those who are watching on RFD TV that yeah. uh, you talk about, a, a looks, you know, I, I, those, those uh, pads there, those, uh, uh, you see them in radio studios, but you've mm -hmm. got a semi-trailer, 53-foot trailer in there, and there's plenty of room for another one, it looks like to me. That, uh, actually, that shot, a little bit of history, that shot, they were, uh, they were shooting the cell and they had this thing sitting outside and so they backed it in there and took a picture to show the size. It gives you the good. Uh, yeah, we've got, we can run uh, our largest generator sets. We can cool them, we can run fuel in there so we can actually run them under load. We've got a uh, whole series of microphones picking up sound from different angles and different levels. And that's how we can come to the market with, with some of the quietest generators out there in mm -hmm. the market. Dwayne Fisk and Justin Davis joining us here on Rural America Live with Cummins Engines and their standby generators. We're going to take our first break and give you our telephone number. When we come back, opening our telephone lines, and we'll hear more from them and want to hear from you as well. Just getting a good start here. Rural America Live continues right after this. Cummins has been a part of the agricultural community for generations now. And generations are important when it comes to performance and reliability. And that's important on the farm. We're a family company. From the farm to the fields to the rodeo arena, we provide reliable power for a very unreliable world. And welcome back to World America Live, our friends from Cummins Power Generation. I'm Mark Oppold. We're here, we, we are here with Justin Davis, sales manager for Cummins Southern Plains, and Dwayne Fisk, regional sales manager uh, as well, and from Minnesota. Uh, and uh, our telephone line's opening right now for you. And the number is the same, 877-731-6733. Questions you might have, whatever your operation is, livestock, a grain operation. You've got some dryers out there. I'm sure folks uh, might have that. Uh, again, the number, either you're watching RFD TV or listening to us on Sirius XM, the number the same, 877-731-6733. Let us hear from you. Uh, you're a very important part of our program from here to the top of the hour. Uh, Dwayne, back to you. And uh, we talked about the engines. Uh, and we may talk more about that. Callers may have some questions about your generator sets. But uh, you wanted to talk about alternator, the, your alternator systems, because that's something you're very proud of as well. Right. Our new, our new Connect series 
series, uh, we've actually designed a new alternator, and that's the uh, that's the part that's turning the engine put turns that and, and makes electrical power. Mm -hmm. um, all of our Connect series use a brushless design, and that brushless design is uh, allowing us to have better frequency control. It gives us uh, fewer maintenance items to fix on a generator, and so it's allowed us to to uh, exercise our generator sets to make sure that they're operable. Not quite as frequently as we do uh, if you have a brush design, and again, the, fr the frequency control is, is improved, and, and we're able to uh, get better power out of it. For the uh, a lot of the, a lot of the controls in these confinement barns now are run with a they've got a microprocessor in there, they've got a computer running the different systems, and mm -hmm. so frequency control is a big deal for that. And so we've actually come up with a whole new series of alternators that we use in this new uh, gen set. So again, just to review, uh, the why again the, the brushless alternator is so important in these applications again? It uh, gives us better frequency control yeah. and we don't have as many parts to maintain. There's fewer parts there so we don't have to do the maintenance quite as often and then the exercising you don't have to exercise it quite as often. A lot of the exercising is to make sure that the brushes and the slip rings are making contact. When we don't have the brushes and the slip rings to worry about that means that we can extend uh, the time between our exercise mm -hmm. periods. What about maintenance here? We got a caller on the line here we're going to go to in a minute, but just giving viewers and listeners an idea how much maintenance is there with one of these generators? Normally, you're going to have somebody come out and check it a couple times a year. Yeah. Since the system will exercise and it does it, you, you can tell the system when you want it to exercise. Say you want it to exercise Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. You want it to exercise for 20 minutes. You can tell it. The control is smart enough, intelligent enough to, mm -hmm. to be trained and told when to start it. So you can train the unit when to do the exercising. And... and uh, that normally is going to take care of, so when you do have a power outage, you know that the, the set's ready to go. Sure. Very good. We'll come back. You have something else you want no, to add? Just the, yeah. No, he, he covered. We're good. Very good. All right. We're going to go to South Carolina for our first call. South Again, Carolina. the lines are open, 877-731-6733. Jim has called us from South Carolina. Hi, Jim. Hi. How are you boys doing? Thanks for calling tonight. What can we do for you? Well, I got a question for them fellers uh, from Cummins. Uh, um, my name's Jim. I'm from uh, James Island, South Carolina, and I've got a oh, I don't know, about a three thousand square foot home. Uh, I got a barn in the back with a few horses. Well, all I'm looking to do is run some lights and a well pump and things like that. I just, I just have no idea about what size mm -hmm. gym set you got. Yeah, what size gym set you boys think I'll need? G yeah, Jim, I mean, the best thing to do is get somebody out there, but there's, in the, in the generator world in general, there's air-cooled units, which are going to be your lower budgetary type units that's going to do what you just described. And then there's the liquid-cooled ones. So you could probably uh, get by with a 20 kW, 20 kW range um, and then work your way up from there. But if you're just wanting to run lights, are you running any kind of AC loads as far as air conditioning? Well that's going to depend on how much these things cost. Uh, I, I've got an air conditioner, and when we lose power, we're going to lose power for just a, a day or so. I don't think air conditioning is that big of a deal. Um, but there again, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about generators. And Well, and that's, and, and that, and that's why we strongly suggest that you get a professional out there. Uh, there, we've got free home estimates out there, so it doesn't cost you anything to get a professional out there and just say, hey, look, this is because this is where you need to put your generator, this is the fuel type that you need, here's what you can run, here's what you can't run. Um, so I'd, I'd strongly suggest uh, we can go to now.cummins.com backslash RFDTV. I know that's a mouthful, but I think they got it up on the yes, screen there. Yes, there it is on the screen for you, Jim. Uh, but go there, type your zip code in, and it'll pull up... Um, It'll pull up the, uh, the the service locators there, but around a 20 kW is is where they start, and then they go up from there. So I hope that answered your question. Very good, thanks for that, Jim. And you know, it gave, uh, made me uh, wonder, you know, things like how far is the house from the barn he's talking about, where the horses are? How much of that barn does he want to control? Just you know, mm -hmm. lights and, and a heating unit, or or so that's where you need that person to come out there, walk with Jim around the farm, step yeah. it off, and say this is what it might there's take. There's so many variables that go into sure. an install. Yeah. So uh, there's so many variations of here's what you can do, here's what you can't do. There's codes, there's local codes that you have to there abide by. Yeah. So it's just it's best to get a professional out Very there. Very good. Thanks for the call, Jim. Good, good start there. And that means now with Jim leaving us, the line open for you, 877-731-6733. Not too far away. We're going to stay in the east and go from South Carolina to Virginia and say good evening. 
evening to Ed. Hi, Ed. Hello. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. Well, I'm looking for a uh, standby diesel generator for our home. I live in an, on an orchard in Rappahannock County, mm -hmm. and uh, we tend to lose our power frequently. And my wife is, uh, has Alzheimer's for about 10 years now, and we just can't hop up and go to a motel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to, a phone number of somebody that I could call that would come out and give me an assessment of uh, what size uh, generator we would need and what it would take. It's one would be a diesel and uh, have about a 200-amp service on the house. Again, Ed, that, uh, that website that we had up on the screen before, now.cummins.com slash RFDTV, there is a service locator. And again, like Justin said earlier, it's always good to have somebody to come out and take a look at what you have. Uh, there are so many different options. Uh, you've already identified what fuel you want to run, and you've got a pretty good idea of the kind of power that what you're looking for at the home, but it's always good to have somebody come out because they'll be able to sit down with you and show you, okay, this size generator and, you know, uh, a diesel, you might start off with 10 kilowatt. I always, I always caution... I figure I need about a 20, but yeah. I, don't, I don't have a computer. I need a telephone number. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. We got that for you, we too. We can do that, too. Let's do that right now. Yeah, okay. go ahead. And let's, while you keep doing, giving him, and we'll get, put that number up on the screen for you, too, uh, Ed. Okay. Thank you. I, I like to caution people, don't, don't buy too small, because when you put that generator in, you've invested a lot of money. And if you invest the money and then find out that it doesn't do all that you wanted to do or uh, you need to allow for growth, too. And that's where somebody comes in, one of our service prof uh, uh, professionals can come in, sit down with you and say, okay, uh, this much money is going to give you a 20-kilowatt diesel. Uh, you want a 24-hour tank, do you want a 48-hour tank or 96-hour tank? And like I said earlier in the show, it depends on how close you are to fuel. If it's easy for you to, uh, to, to get a fuel truck out there, you can go with a smaller tank. But again, these, uh, these guys that can come out and sit down and talk to you, they know what the codes are in your locale, and they can give you a list of options. If we do it this, it's going to cost this much. We can do it this way. And so that's the way to go. Very get somebody good. in there and take a look at it. And Ed, there's the number on the screen if you see that there. And all the uh, rest of you watching and or listening, 800-343-7357. Again, toll free, 800-343. 343-7357, and when you get that, if it's after hours, uh, you select option two. option two, just put two, hit two on your phone, and if no one, if the lines are busy or no one there, Ed, or anyone else listening or watching, you can leave a message, and the yep. folks will get back to you uh, as soon as they can. Information, yep, they'll, and they'll get back. That's because the last time your show was so successful, we didn't have enough voices to answer the calls. <laughs> so just leave your name and number, and Ed, I promise you somebody will get back to you for sure. Very good. Well, we're glad. That makes me feel good, you know, someone that, you know, they has a situation where his wife needs care and he wants to make sure that there's power goes out. They don't, you know, they can't get to a hotel. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you get, a, you, you come across, you mentioned that, Dwayne, a lot of different applications. You don't know what's going to be, but yeah. certainly you have the peace of mind to know it's there when you need it. Right. Right. What about uh, maybe uh, following up on that? If someone is listening, tuning in, and they, and they, well, they want to hear more, how would you suggest, uh, either one of you, the process, what would be the start of the process to, uh, to see about a standby generator? I think, I think one of the first things is to figure out what fuel is going to be right for you. You know, each yeah. situation... Ed knew he know. wanted diesel fuel. Ed knew he wants diesel. Good job, Ed. Um, and, and when you select diesel, you need to know that Diesel fuel can, can get sour, and so you've got to keep it fresh. You've got to put an additive in it in cold weather. Uh, you've got to treat it for that. But you need to uh, understand what fuel is going to be right for your situation. And that's really a personal decision. And again, when, when our people come out and do a site survey, they will be able to lead you into uh, the, the pluses and the minuses, the pros and the cons for this fuel versus another one. Mm -hmm. The other thing, obviously, is the t size and type of loads. You got single phase power on, uh, that you want to run, that's one situation. If you got three phase power, if you got some motors that you got to start, like on a, on a pump motor, a lot of times they'll have three phase, some of the ventilation will be three phase. So you need to f understand what loads that you want to run, and then you need to understand you want single phase versus three phase. Uh, they'll ask you, are you going to plan any expansions, or is there something more that we need to take a look at that you might want to power down the road? Because like I said before, once you spend the money and you've got it there and you find out that it's not enough, 
you, you spent the money mm -hmm. and, and you're going to be sour on that thing. So they, they'll ask questions and to get you thinking about what's going to make sense. Uh, and then the other thing is where are you going to put it? Uh, we like to make sure that it's in a safe location. We like to make sure that it's going to be close somewhere to the uh, electrical service inlet. And again, if you're going to be running a, a, a propane tank, uh, you got to have room for the propane tank. If you want diesel, what we've got up on the screen now, we're showing you shots of some of the different diesel units that we have available. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a big one. If you really get serious about power, that's the uh, that's a lot of grunt there. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but the the tan ones with the black base, those are the different fuel tanks that we have. And then you get into the green where it's more on the commercial side, and that's when we're talking about the 500 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. and there you got a shot of our air cooled one, the little one on the right, and then the uh, Connect Series was the one on the left. Very good. All right, more calls coming in here, and we look forward to talking to you. We're going to go to Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin. nearby, hey, uh, hey. home to home territory. <laughs> hello, you. Wisconsin. Yeah, hello, Wisconsin. <laughs> this is David from the Badger State. Hi, David. Hey. Thanks for calling. Go ahead. Justin and, and Dwayne are here for you. Okay. We, we live, of course, in northern Wisconsin. We live on a dead-end road, a half mile back with timber on both sides. And it's a large log cabin with about 3,000 square feet. I'll be right there. <laughs> it sounds, sounds like, like a great place. Yeah, it sounds like a great place. <laughs> what, what's for dinner? Go ahead. Excuse us. Go ahead, David. And we got a large garage. Can this be put inside the garage so it's a, a diesel would start well at 30 below? David, I would recommend not putting these inside. They're designed to be outside. Now, if you did put it inside, there there would have to be some. Uh, uh, You've got to have fire break. I don't even know that your local code would allow you to put it inside, but Probably I can tell not. you that we do an awful lot of cold weather testing, and uh, you put larger batteries on. You've got a uh, coolant heater that's going to keep that engine warm all the uh -huh. time, and that's running on the thermostat. Uh, in the severe cases, we'll put a, a, a heater on the battery, uh, but there are a lot of options that we've got that will allow you to uh, get these things started. Uh, and again, we're from Minnesota, so we understand cold. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, not easy to do, but on the current diesel engines, uh, with all the electronics we got on them and the new con uh, combustion systems, uh, it's a lot easier to do than in the olden days. So uh, I, I think you'd be better off having this unit sitting outside, and then we just option it up to make sure it's ready to start. That sounds interesting. I, uh... I could use one like that, and uh, I don't have any other questions on it. You ans answered the main one. Okay. Go Pack Go. <laughs> Thanks, David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that, David? Go Packers. <laughs> Had to get it in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. We, we're going to take some more calls here, but we had an opportunity to catch up with uh, Russ Usselton. Uh, he's a board member of the Tennessee Beef Industry Council. Uh, a few weeks ago on his farm just south of Nashville, he talked about the importance for him of having an installed generator on the farm. Let's take a look. Hey, Russ. Hey, Justin. How are you, my friend? Doing good. How are you? Good deal. We're going to talk about some generators today. Good that worked for you? That worked Let's go for take me. a peek and we'll see what you got. Cummins and Cummins Zonan has been a name well known around this farm for a long time. It's one that we count on quite, quite actually every day. You know, from the, you know, fairly late model Dodge with the Cummins that, that hauls the cattle and the hay and the feed up and down the road to the, to the old beat up farm truck sitting out behind the barn. You know, it's older, it's not as pretty, same deal, it's still here every day. I run a cattle operation in southern middle Tennessee. I have been for quite a long time. Uh, today's environment, you know, having the right equipment to do what you need to get done is, is vitally important. It, it's competitive, it's, it's hard to deal with, it's volatile, as we've seen in the commodity markets the last couple of years. You're up one day, you're down the next. And I can't stress the importance of, of you've got to know what you're working with. Here in southern middle Tennessee, the ice storms are a big deal for us. Some of the folks that I know up north have snow, we have ice. Snow you can deal with, ice you can't. Everything breaks, it's down, it's in the middle of the road, across the road. In the cases of old, we had the old PTO mounted tractor generator. You got to dig it out of the back of the shed, hope you can get it to start, hope you can get it to run, try to get the tractor to run. 
With these new generators, it's already there. I don't have to go find the old generator. I don't have to try to make it work. Don't have to dig it out of the shed. With the new series, the generator's there. It's running. It works. That was uh, Russ Usselton, a board member of the Tennessee Beef Industry Council. Russ and his wife, Leanne, by the way, are here in studio. I'm glad you brought them along here. They are here, you know, and that's just one more thing. You know, our customers are our friends. Russ and I have been friends for a long time, and, and uh, I reached out to him, and, and it was just a big family. So uh, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that he did that Great. little piece for us. Yeah, absolutely. We thank him for that, Russ. And it puts a face with customers all around the country, absolutely. really, that, that are that are satisfied and, and, and have, a, have a really a need for your generators. More mm -hmm. callers are coming. Let's try to get one more here okay. and talk about maybe some of these. We've had several about homes, so we mm -hmm. may get back to that. But this is John from North Carolina. Hi, John. Howdy. Thanks for waiting. Yeah, you're on here now with Justin and Dwayne. Hey, John. Hey. We we have a horse ranch on North, in North Carolina, and we show high dog core horses. I ain't going to say we got the best in the world, but <laughs> we show anything from barrel horses, cut horses, roping horses. We actually have an ex-world champion reigning horse. Well, congratulations. All right. We have we have Dodge trucks. We've got Ford trucks. The best one we got is a Dodge, of course, with the cones. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so far, so good. My, yeah. my question is, if we load up, and we've got farm hands that takes care of all the livestock, all the crops and everything. If we load up to go to the show and we're in Texas, Las Vegas, whatever, how reliable are their emissions on the power generation to withstand to high winds over, you know, reuse and reuse and reusing that engine? How reliable is the emissions on the generators? The, the emissions? Yes, the emissions. I'm not sure we really understand. Yeah, I don't know the question. what you mean. You mean as how reliable are they if, if you're? I'm, I don't know how reliable are they if you're gone and, and your and your ranch hands are there to take care of things. Is that what you're asking? Uh, well, I mean, my question is: Does my ranch hands have to worry about you know get somebody in here to fix it if a storm comes in, or how reliable is okay. the whole entire engine to the whole component? <laughs> well, here's one thing about Cummins: We're not going to go to market with a product that doesn't work. Uh, we're just not going to do that. We're going to be slow to the market. Uh, like I told you earlier, we, we built 44 beta units, uh, 14,000 hours worth of testing. So uh, it's still a man-made product. We're not going to sit here and lie to you say it's going to work every single time. But we put a whole lot of engineering behind this. Um, and I would be comfortable saying my grandma's in, in, in on her deathbed and that generator's going to start. I would yeah. pick ours over any, any anyone yeah. out there. John, one, and one of the options that we have for our generator is called the Power Command. And it is a remote monitoring system so you actually have that monitor system set up to call your servicing agent so that uh, before your ranch hands know that the generator is not operating your service person is going to be able to uh, to get the message and, and we send fault code information um, either an email or text message but uh, that power command will actually monitor what's going on and uh, we can get your service people alerted to the fact that that uh, there's a problem in the generator like I said, probably before your ranch hands know that it's that it's not operating properly. So uh, we're we're set up. We can we can get you fixed up. And the other thing is, when a service person shows up on the scene, uh, there's a self-diagnostic system built into the generator. So he's going to punch a couple buttons. And uh, I got a call not too long ago from from a. a uh, customer and and she complained because she said the guy came out to fix her generator and he never even took the rag out of his pocket and I hmm. at first thought uh, this is not going where it's supposed to go and I said well did they get your generator fixed well she said he hooked up a laptop computer and punched a couple buttons and he left and it, it works now but he didn't even he didn't even fix anything I said well <laughs> Ma'am, there's a microprocessor, there's a computer in that generator set, and all he did was talk to it and find out what needed to be Where fixed. Where we are, and connect some dots, it. and that was it. The only thing he had to take the rag out of his pocket for was to wipe his hands and make sure he didn't get the keyboard <laughs> greasy. So. Well, and that brings up another point, too, Dwayne, is that 
when we built this new line of generators, we wanted commonality. Um, so as far as parts availability, we have to stock less parts to, to cover a wider variety of our that generators. Yeah. So mm -hmm. instead of having you know 15 different parts that you need, uh, it's consolidated into two or three. So yeah. it's uh, parts availability and service yeah. availability is a lot better on this new product. All right, John, thanks for that call. It helps a lot of folks that are listening and watching tonight maybe have the same question. One more before we take a break here. Another uh, heavy weather country, certainly Oklahoma, right. and we're going to talk to Clayton from the Sooner State. Clayton, how are you tonight? Hey, Mark. How are you? Yes, fine. Thanks for calling and thanks for hanging on. Now you're on with Justin and Dwayne. Hey, Clayton. Oh, you bet. Yes. Hey, how are you doing there, Jason? Uh, the reason I'm calling is that I live out in Oklahoma and I don't really live. I live close to Duncan. I've got uh, about 40 acres uh, and obviously on here I don't have a lot of natural gas. I really don't want to use diesel. Um, do these things, you may have covered this, do, do these things run on propane? Can you they, get propane? They do, and actually I just set up, Oklahoma's part of my territory, so uh, I don't know if you're close to Marlowe. We've got a new dealer in Marlowe, Oklahoma, um, that, have, that, have, that have been in the generator business for about two years now, and, uh, and they can get you set up. But yes, the, the, actually the natural gas units are, are a little bit easier to maintain, mm -hmm. a little more fuel efficient, and a little more cost effective as far as capital expenditure. A, a, a diesel one is gonna be a little more expensive, uh, but there's some pros and cons to it. So yeah, uh, natural gas or, or propane may be the way to go for you. But uh, yeah, go to the, the website and we'll, uh, we'll get you that dealer in Marlowe. It was real close to Duncan. Well, for me, it'd have to be propane. I, 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 here's what I got. I got a 500-gallon tank. Is there any way for me to know how much? Uh, am I going to have to get a bigger tank, or do you think 500 gallons is enough? Uh, normally, that's sufficient on, on most installs, uh, depending on what you're running, your run time, and your load on the generator. So it depends on if you go air-cooled versus liquid-cooled, depending on if you're half-load, full-load. Uh, so there's some variations in there. But normally, a 500-gallon tank should get you set up. I have one more question. I appreciate you guys taking the you call. Bet. Uh, uh, now, these products, are these things made overseas, and do you just slap a Cummins logo on them, or are they actually made by Cummins? That's a fantastic question. Yeah. <laughs> We're glad to answer this one here for you, Clayton. <laughs> We're American-made, man. We're American-made. Well, I'm glad to hear that, boys. Truly, I really am. Truly. Yeah. So. Thanks, thanks a lot, Thanks Clayton. for your call. Yeah, you. and, and, and we have that 800 number, Clayton. But if you're in, uh, watching your TV, you can write this down as well for the website that... Uh, Justin was referring to there as uh, again now. as now.cummins.com then slash forward slash backslash a slash a I slash, think a slash is a slash RFD TV <laughs> yeah, slash is a slash I'm with you on that one now.cummins.com slash RFD TV and they'll have your and then you can just type in your question or your area your Zip in Oklahoma yep. and your zip code and they'll take care of you. We're going to take a break here. Those of you on the line will be with you and those of you that want to call in if there's a line open 877-731-6733 to join the conversation. Back with more with Cummins Power Generation when we return after this. Welcome back to World America Live with Cummins Power Generation. I'm Mark Oppel, joined by Justin Davis, sales manager for Cummins Southern Plains, and Dwayne Fisk, regional sales manager from the great state of Minnesota. Telephone lines open, 877-731-6733. Again, and we'll be giving you their website and their toll-free number uh, between now and the end of our program. So you can use those numbers and that website well after our program is over and learn more about these great standby generations. Generators. I want to talk about, we've had a couple of questions about homes. I want to make sure we cover that completely here as much as we can, Dwayne. Anything you want to add there? Well, and, and we have been talking about the egg business. Uh, we also do uh, the smaller generators for homes. We've got a 13 and a 20 kilowatt uh, air-cooled generator, which uh, we're proud to say are the quietest ones out in the market. Uh, and again, they're connected to an automatic transfer switch. It's seamless. Uh, when the power goes out, the power comes on in eight to ten seconds, and uh, and you're set to go. And again, this is just a um, uh, a toned down system from what we would be talking about for an egg 
or a business situation which get to be more involved in larger sets. Uh, Air-cooled units are, uh, uh, take up less space in the yard, they use less fuel, they're quieter, mm -hmm. but they still provide the needs of a home. And again, it's important to have somebody come out and take a look sure. at the situation, talk with you about what you need, and, and they can get you set up. But what yeah. about some additional items maybe that we might think about in that regard or generators again? Yeah, uh, accessories, Dwayne touched on it, uh, the power command can send you email, text notifications when your generator comes on. Uh, if there are any fault codes, you can actually, that, it's data log that they can send to your dealer or your technician, so it lets them know what's going on prior to them coming out, so they can have parts and everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll, we also have level two sound enclosures that'll quiet it down even more. Uh, so there's there's quite a, a, a list of, of accessories Very that we can good. offer. Let's go back to the telephones and for our time remaining, and we have more items to cover here, but we wanna hear from you, and Katie is up next from New York State. Hi, Katie. Hi. I love for... the cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a lot of comments on yeah, that. It's become that, a talking point for sure. <laughs> so. Love it. Love it. Don't see a whole lot of cowboy hats in Syracuse, but we do have a lot of power outages. Here. Oh, I know you do. So my question is, if it goes out, am I going to need my husband around to do anything if it goes out once the system is installed? Or is that something, if I'm here you know, that I'll be okay with, will I have to do anything? It is 100% automatic, Katie, 100% yeah. automatic. So, no, you don't need anybody to do anything except for go get you a cold drink out of the, out of the refrigerator. Maybe the only thing you need in for. <laughs> I hear that one. <laughs> Man, you, that's, you're, you're two for two. <laughs> No, they, Katie, no, the, the, way, the way the system works is, is the transfer switch and the generator sense when the utility is dropped. And as soon as they sense that that utility is dropped, it starts the generator. The generator starts up. The transfer mm -hmm. switch takes you off of the grid and puts you on the generator. It's interesting that after your power comes back, we're going to continue to run the generator for a while because normally when the power comes back, the voltage dips as everything on the grid starts to power up. So we're going to wait until we get a stable voltage signal. And once we get a stable voltage signal, then we'll transfer you back onto the grid. And then the generator actually goes into a five-minute cool down where it just uh, uh, takes a little bit of a time to, to cool down, and then it shuts off. And when it shuts off, then it's rearmed for the next uh, mm -hmm. opportunity. So it's completely automatic. Very good. Uh, I want to talk about yeah. the, the... Oh, do you have another question maybe, Katie? I didn't know you were no, still along with I us. No, I just said, you. Yeah, it's okay, you got me sold. Thank <laughs> you very much. Go to the website, and we'll, we'll be happy to sell you one for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks, Thanks for calling, Katie. Yeah, call again, please. Um, uh, installation, real quick before, then I'm going to talk about this contest. People have mm -hmm. been hanging out. Well, you told me I could win a new generator. So what about who wants to cover installation? I'll, I'll do installation. Right. Uh, if that's okay. That's fine. Uh, installation, it's a construction site, and that's what you've got to realize, is there is there's going to be guys with muddy boots if it's raining. Uh, there's going to be uh, gravel dug up. There's going to be equipment coming in and out. Um, they're going to have to cut power from the house to do the install. So it, it's it's a mini construction site for a couple of days. So you do have to realize that. But our guys are really good. The guys that we team up with really uh, are first class dealers um, that really do a fantastic job. Uh, but yes, there there's there's two or three days just like getting your your kitchen remodeled or something like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to allow the workers to do their job, but they'll clean up afterwards, and, and you'll definitely be happy the first time you lose power and the lights are still yeah, on. Yeah, so exactly right. It's worth it. Yeah. And, Justin, before we begin, uh, we're getting close to our top of the hour here, but we uh, teased the folks here about a, a giveaway that, you're, that Cummins is going to give a brand-new generator to someone. Let's talk about how they enter that contest. Okay, so they go to now.cummins.com backslash RFDTV. And you have to schedule an in-home um, consultation right. by next Monday, which is July the 20th. 20th. July uh -huh. 20th. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, you have to have that consultation by the end of, of August. Uh, we're going to put names in a hat, maybe my hat, and draw them out. <laughs> and then they, they get a free generator. So if they, and We had a caller that didn't have a computer or didn't want to use one. You also have that 800 number they can call as well, right? 1-800-DIESELS. Right. With the S. Make sure you put the S at the end. Option two. So that's uh, 1 800 343 7357. Right. Hit number two uh, and go ahead and schedule that in, and uh, you could be uh, getting a new generator. For free. By the end, yeah, call before July 21st and schedule that before the end of August. End of August is the deal, so. Um. 
Well, how about that? Well, thank you very much. And you so bet. our RFD TV viewers and listeners have a head start on that, don't they? We do love the RFD TV, <laughs> so we want to give a little bit back. So. Well, thank you very much. You uh, have talked about a generator and the, the transfer switch, maybe different, uh, Justin, considerations there. I mean, you, Dwayne, mentioned it as well. Maybe we make sure, I think we have a call to what it was going to ask about that, but didn't hang on. What about that? Uh, generator, yeah, go ahead. The transfer switch uh, is, is the often overlooked. People take, think about the uh, generator and they don't realize that there's got to be something between the generator and the house or between the service. And so uh -huh. uh, our transfer switches, uh, it, it's important to note, Mark, that everything we build is built uh, uh, by, by guidance underneath UL, Underwriters Laboratory. Sure. Uh, familiar, you, you see UL on a lot of the electrical components, but everything we build is, is uh, built in a safe manner. And uh, they, like I said earlier, sense when the power goes out, and they switch you from the power grid over to the generator. And again, when the generator uh, sees that the power is back on the grid and waits until the voltage is stable, it tra transfers you back. But that's a, a, a gray box that looks kind of like your distribution panel in your mm -hmm. house. And it can be mounted inside or outside. We've got both service entrance if you want to run the whole site or if we've got a non-service entrance situation, if you just want to run uh, separate circuits or a few circuits, you can use. So we've got a couple different styles of transfer switches mm -hmm. uh, to meet any need out there. We had a caller, Justin, wanted to know, well, okay, so they come out and do my inspection. How, how long will it take then, once that's done, all things equal, to get my generator installed? What's the time frame, roughly? Uh, roughly, you know, depending on weather and, and what jobs they have scheduled, but you're probably looking at a two-week time frame. Uh, actual install, probably two or three days. Two or three days mm -hmm. to install, but a couple of weeks after you do the inspection, mm -hmm. there are probably some follow-up things there. Make sure you have the footage right, and you know, so. There is, and, and even getting permits, there's there's some places where you have to get permits to do it, so, so registering those permits, so it is a process. So really from start to finish, two, maybe three weeks, but the actual install, two or three days. Very good. And before we, we have about a couple of minutes here, but uh, you were here with us last year. Just we, we were curious uh, as you went away from the program last year, what you know that helped you service your customers maybe a little better from that time to tonight. Uh, we we're, we're uh, enjoyed very much being on the show last time, and that's why we're we're back again. But we had a lot of good calls, a lot of good customer contacts. Uh, we like we like the egg market. It's it's kind of a new market for us. We've been in the residential and the business and the commercial side, but the egg market and we've we've uh, uh, designed some of our sets specifically for the egg market now. Mm -hmm. So our opportunity on RFD TV was uh, was great. We really right. enjoyed it and well, had a great time and a lot of good calls afterwards. Thank you. I just wanted to, yeah, I know you wanted to mention that and we appreciate having you here and a great partnership here with Cummins. Uh, about a minute or so here for you, Dwayne. Uh, final thoughts, uh, 40 plus years. What do you want to leave with our audience tonight? Uh, I think the interesting thing for me is we've got something for everybody, depending on the size of your operation, whether it's a farm, whether it's just your home in a residential situation, whether you've got a commercial operation, whether you're containment egg, we've got something for you. We've got the product because we've been able to take our products, and again, they're designed according to UL, so they're safe. They're fuel efficient. We've got some of the most fuel efficient. We've got some of the most quiet generators on the market. So we've got something for just about everybody, regardless if you're uh, in any of these markets. You had a couple of calls regarding cold, 30 below zero weather in Wisconsin. You're from Minnesota. We know uh, that. You, and you just, I think just to reiterate, you go through a lot of rigorous testing, cold, right. wet, you know, uh, yeah. vibrations, but to make sure these are going to work when they need to work. We, te we test at our facility. One thing that wasn't mentioned was we do field tests as well. So uh, I was involved in some of the field tests, and we had units from, from Cape Cod up into Canada, up into northern Canada, and, and uh, back in the war, we got some down in Virginia and, and down in South Carolina. So we test them in our facility, and we also test them on the field. And uh, Justin uh, Davis, you have a last word here. Your final thoughts. Oh, I just love the ag market. You know, uh, we fit into the ag market better than any competitor out there um, with the Dodge trucks and everything else. So I think it's a really good fit. We just want to make sure that they know that we don't only build Dodge truck engines, that we build generators uh, for their home and businesses right. and everything. And hello to Ashlyn and Madeline watching, too. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I just had to put that and in You there. look good in that hat, too, uh, by the thank way. Thank you. Well, I'll I tell you what. Good I, 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 that don't take so. that off. All right. <laughs> don't forget, you can enter the contest calling one 800 Diesels 1 800 343 7357. 800 343 7357. From all of us here at RFD TV and Cummins Power Generation, thanks for watching and good night from rural America's most important network.